everybody. Oh, you dancing. I can dance with you. <clears throat> hey, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday Dennis dinner. Dennis. I don't know. Who's Dennis, Mom? I don't know. You need to tell me about Who's something. My first love. Did I tell you about Dennis? No. I have to tell you about one day. You know Lita Topley, don't you? Who's Dennis? <laughs> <laughs> So, no, Jean no. Carter, you get to watch this, you know, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, who are you? But anyway, anyway, welcome to another Sunday dinner with Valencia and Isis. We get on our house clothes. Yeah, today. so it's cold outside. Baby, it's, it's snowing cold outside. It is. Yes, it is. Winter wonder. Snow night. is coming down. Yeah. Cars are sliding. Ooh. They sure are. And so we are here. We're stuck in a house. So we're going to yeah. do every, every time. Every time. It snows. It snows. We bring we out this have. meal. What are we having? Tomato soup. Um, Grilled cheese. cheese. She, she did I, say she she said, <laughs> I didn't realize what you were saying. You saw, um. So I, said, I was like, what, what was happening with that? <laughs> like, tomato on. soup and grilled cheese. And we're going to make our own tomato soup. And we're going to show you how you can make your own tomato soup too. What? You know what I want though? What? I know we have some monster. Can you see if we have any kind of cheddar? Anything close to a cheddar? Sure. In there? <laughs> do you feel like it? Sure. I'll do it. You talk to them and now you do it. I need to introduce. Yeah, come on over here, mom. Come on over here. Come on. So, do we have any kind of cheddar? I don't know if we have cheddar, you guys. But let's just go ahead and um, I don't know if she left me. Usually she starts the whole spill about who mm -hmm. we are as a team. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you just tell them about yourself, Mom, and I'll just interact, you know, act it out. <laughs> okay. My name is Valencia Daniel, also known as the Game Changer. They call me the Game Changer because when you see me coming, you know that a positive change is going to take place. I, I don't know if they can hear you. Oh, for real? I they can hear you. They okay. can. Because just like, I am an international trainer, an award-winning speaker, best-selling author, and your power performance coach. I use my expertise in neuroscience, change management, and leadership to tailor trainings to individuals and organizations just like you that will propel you from average into excellence. All right, now. <laughs> and who else do we have with us today? And my name <laughs> is Isis Daniel, and I am your personal sommelier. Okay? So you guys are going through the journey with me as I, you know, learn more about wine and become an actual sommelier. I've ever, I am certified my level one WSC team. Yay. Yes. Wash it. Wait, excuse me. Wine and spirits. Yep. Wine and spirits. So, yeah. So here and we also, we taste spirit. wine, we eat food, and we be merry. I hope I didn't have my butt turned all up no. into the No. You sure? Mm -mm. You're not, not sure. sure. <laughs> so, you guys, I'm going to have my head down a little bit because I will be sharing and inviting. Please, you guys, share, invite, cut love sharing the page. is what? Caring. Hello. Who is that? I know. I don't have my glasses on either. Oh, my God. Marlene. Crazy. Hey, Marlene. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Woo, woo, woo. woo. Okay. It's party so time. I totally want to get... These carrots and everything on well, because you know it takes carrots long. Ooh, <laughs> what's going on? Let's switch. <laughs> okay, I'm like you know. Yeah. So know. again, I'm sharing you guys. So first of all, who is on the West Coast experiencing this winter wonderland? With West us? Coast? Why would the West Coast? I meant to be say East Coast because that's where we are. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say West Coast. My bizzle. My your bad. bizzle. Your is that what that means? Your bad. Yeah. Your bizzle is My your bad. bad. Okay. <laughs> ahead, yeah. Mom. So I it's so cold here in the east, and I think most of even even some of the southeast yeah. got some of this. So my I have a daughter that's down in Memphis, and it's kind of cold down there today. Oh, really? Yeah. So. That's a little bit different for her. Yeah, and she's like, ooh, I, she had to bundle up a little bit. 
out there in these streets yeah. today. But it's, she didn't understand that it was so cold here that we were experiencing snow, snow until I talked to her. Okay, so I want to get this stuff going, and yes. when I say this so stuff, what talk about, about what are we about? doing? What are we doing? So I'm going to start the base of my um, homemade tomato soup. Now, this is something that I tell people all the time because it's something that I do. If you want to make your own stuff and you're just not sure where to start, look on the back of the can of what you do. Right. Like, it'll say stuff like carrots in it and, and onions, things that you just wouldn't naturally think of. And that's what I did ugh, some time ago. I don't even know how long ago that's been. But I am going to go ahead and put some of those base ingredients in my pan. So I had, I wanted some tomatoes and I wanted some fry, fire roasted tomatoes. And I just used what, a can you know, the ones without sugar in it and any preservatives, you can do that and just get started or you can just use some tomatoes. So you can do one or two things. I guess I should tell people like all of their options that they have for them. Yeah. I used um, some canned tomatoes. You don't have to do that. You can use for yourself because I wanted some fire roasted ones. But you can use just regular tomatoes. Just cut your tomatoes up, dice them up real good. And then we're going to put it in with some onions, mm -hmm. which I know it sounds kind of strange. Because I remember thinking that. I was like, onions? But then when you look on the back, like I said, if you look on the back of a can of like tomato soup, you're going to see some of these basic things are in there. So we're going to make sure that we put them in ours as well. So let me turn this on so that I can start to do it. I'm going to cook it down for about 20 good minutes. I'm going to put a little bit of carrots in. Won't change the color or anything, but again, it's all about adding flavor to our overall dish. And you know, if you make, when you think about um, stock, chicken stock or something, it's got all these things in it. Yeah. It's got all these things in it. So I'm cutting the tomato, um, the tomatoes, the carrots, really, really small. You know how dense carrots are. I want these bad fellas to cook all the way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Because you don't want that chunks of carrots. In no there. chunks of carrots. And, and I'm going to use my immersion blender um, to blend everything up really, really fine. Okay. Um, at some point, too. Did we take it out? Yeah, I sure did. Okay. Show sure did. Cool beans. Cool beans. So we can always go for can of tomato soup. But y'all, I'm telling you, look at all the other stuff. Now, once you get past those ingredients that you understand, what ingredients are in there that you don't? Right. Boo. Those are the things that you don't want. I'm going to also put a little bit of basil in mine. Yes. Tomato basil. You don't have to if you don't like basil. I have had it both ways. <laughs> Anytime I open up basil or get some off, it always smells, yeah, it smells so delicious. It's so good. Good. Oh my God. So fresh. So fresh. And that's what you want. You want to add those fresh ingredients mm -hmm. because you're going to taste it in your food. That's the good part about cooking stuff yourself. And it's super, super simple, you guys. All right. So I got a pan going here. Shout out to. My auntie Zay. Hey, Hello. Auntie. Today we're having tomato soup and grilled cheese. Yeah. Woo. Okay. Who else is on here? So we're making our soup ourselves. Yes, we're making our soup ourselves. It's gonna be delicious, you guys. Then we're gonna have some wine. Then we're gonna just enjoy this winter wonderland. Winter, winter, wintery day. I'm gonna also put in a little bit of the tomato paste. It kind of works to amp up that tomato flavor mm -hmm. um, as we start to uh, increase other ingredients. Yeah. So we're gonna put a little bit in there. I'm just the tomato paste girl. Whenever I'm making my own sauce of any kind. She, yeah. We uh -huh. have a ton of tomato paste in the. Uh, yeah. It's it's a, it's a staple. It's considered a staple. <laughs> So what are we talking about today, Mom? Oh my goodness. So no matter who I'm talking to, what? and I like to bring up the stuff that's really relevant, whatever we're going through, whatever we've been talking about, it is like a running theme 
to start talking about kind of what your how to I'm so bad when I say pierce the darkness, but how but, it, I mean, I think it kind of works it's in the darkness, isn't it? Yeah, but it's how to kind of get their attention, how to make your Who's point. There? They can be anybody. anybody. So, is it the people who work for you? Those are for my leaders, my impact driven leaders out there. Is it the people who you work for mm -hmm. and you happen to be the expert, yeah. especially if you're in that mid level um, management? There is always somebody over you. I don't even care if you even own your own business. Mm -hmm. Your clients are over you and they think they know what they want and you know what has to happen within your company yeah um you work in the industry where you guys are up front you know how many servers you have you know how yeah. the kitchen is staffed and people will come in and tell you you can seat me now right they know better than you so we want so we're going to talk here. about when you're the expert and you have something to say and they're just not listening it's so frustrating isn't it i'm going to talk about some things that you can do to be heard yeah and what to do when it just doesn't seem like even that's working because okay. that happens too right that's where the frustration comes yes it happens all the time especially people mm -hmm. whoever's in hospitality hello yeah, she said hello it's it's real because so, the guests feel like they know what they're doing the management thinks they know what they're doing the servers think they know what they're doing the kitchen thinks they know what they're doing. every department all on their own. What are those? Those are carrots? Yeah. Everyone thinks that they know what is necessary. And it's it can be difficult. Those are those are onions. Yeah. <laughs> Bring that up to a really good boil for about twenty good minutes. Yeah. If you want to now, what's the thing that I say all the time, Isis? If you salt while you're cooking. If you salt while you you're cooking, you won't after. have to salt after. You know, mom does this all the time. She will ask me to do something, mm -hmm. say something, see something, and she'll do it herself. Mm -hmm. I do. It's true. So I ask the question and then I answer the question. Is that what happens? Let's talk that? about it. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about that. Let's talk about mm, baby. That didn't work. That song. Yeah, no, that was that was mildly inappropriate. Um, I'm feeling <laughs> slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. But why why did this topic come to mind, Mom? Like, why is so, it something that you wanted to talk about? So when I talk to you, there are things that you 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 always you want to be the most effective communicator. Yes, that you possibly can be. So whether it's talking to managers, whether it's talking to people that you're supervising, whatever, because you I be care. An effective communicator. Yeah. So we have that conversation. I had a conversation with your sister, mm -hmm. who is a, a sound engineer, yeah. and she does sound for these mega churches, and she's got things that. The people in the congregation come up and say, then she's got things that the yeah. musicians say or singers say, and then she's got what the pastor wants, and yeah, she's got to listen medium. to the person. No, there is no medium when you have to answer to someone, oh, and so okay. we want to talk about those things because truly, when we res when we're responding to those people who we work under, it kind of changes things a little bit yeah. on what you can and cannot do. And it makes it a little bit more difficult. So I want to talk about that. But I got to make sure that I get this food Yeah, go ahead. Do what you're so doing. So this is... So then I'm putting in about four cups. I think this is a four cup, cup thing. Yes, yeah, Of uh, broth. But I'm just going to put it in to make sure it fully covers all of my tomatoes. It's not about really putting it all in. It could be. It mm -hmm. smells good. You don't have to. But I do want to get this really, really boiling real good. And like I said, it only takes about a good 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I might as well put this a little bit in there, right? Ain't going to hurt nothing. No, not at all. A little sugar. Mm -hmm. You tried it. Uh, Y'all didn't okay. hear what mom just said, and I'm not going to repeat it. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> but people, replay viewers, go ahead and rewind and listen closely. No, and tell me if you heard what she said. Oh God! Okay. Tape it out if you heard. A little, a little egg. Oh, I think I should put. Egg. I think I should put some. I thought you did. No, I didn't. Okay. Do what you want. 
If y'all want to put it now, do y'all want to put it later? You know, basil is one of those strong, strong. Just like. Just a little bit and then add some basil. Put, I'm put the whole, one whole, one of these. Smack it before you put it in there. Smack you it real good. To. Just do it for me. Do that for the Ooh! basil. But what it does, you guys, ooh, it's even stronger, mm. isn't it? The oils on it my hands, too. It awakes my senses. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's on and popping. On and popping. Okay. So it's on high. I always turn the stove up too high. That yeah. is one did of you my turn things. It down? I'm sure it? I didn't. I got it boiling. Where do you want me to turn down to? Turn down to a good medium. Right. Yeah, right there. Right there, right there. Cause she always trying to burn down the house, y'all. Mm. It's it's crazy. I do. I turn on stuff. No, now when it's really gonna happen is when I get to grilling over here. Cause I turn it up to make the grill hot, and then, she and then I turn it back down. Then I put the butter on, and I'm wondering where is the smoke coming from? Why is it ding 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 ding? Five along, five along. <laughs> y'all. Okay. It's, it's hard out here. So number one. Number one. Numero uno. Numero uno. I don't care if you are a speaker, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a person who works in management, whether you're like my other daughter and kind of freelance and out there working with people. Mm -hmm. The number one thing that you need to do in order to be heard is to speak their language. Yeah. So if you are managing, you need to what? Manage up. That's right. This girl been running with she me a long mama. time. Yeah. You need to manage up and you need to speak in the language of the person that you're speaking to. That means that if you're trying to affect a positive change, yeah. any kind of change, it needs to have a positive effect on the person right. who's going to okay it or who has the ability to veto it. So speaking in their language and making it appeal to them some kind of way really goes a long way in being able to influence people and change their hearts and mind and kind of move it in a direction direction that you wanted to go in. So I always use this example when I'm teaching my speakers. If I were a used car salesman and someone came in and they started talking about child locks on the car mm -hmm. and the industry called it something else. Um, I don't know. I, I want to say child locks is probably what the industry would call it. So let's use the opposite of that. Baby locks. Baby locks. Okay. Say if I came in as a person and I said, I want to make sure that that car or that van or that minivan or whatever it is mm -hmm. has a baby lock. baby lock on it, then the person who's speaking or selling, I need not to correct that person and start talking about child locks. What? Child locks? Uh-uh. you talking about I child locks? I need to talk about baby locks. <laughs> so we have to listen to what people are saying and then give them what they need. Right. In the instance of the president, because that's going on right now and they are making, ooh, did I, did I see your eye? <laughs> And they're trying anything. to appeal to him, but they're trying to appeal to him about what matters, what matters to them. And they're going to have to appeal to him because he's that kind of thinker on the level that he needs to be heard on. So while I am not a person that really believes that we need to build these miles and miles of wall. But I don't know. I'm not a CBP person and I'm not out there. What does that mean? But those individuals, <laughs> what, CBP? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what um, that means. Customs and Border Patrol. Oh, I didn't know that. They means. are the people who sure. are yeah. on, on, on the front lines there um, at the borders. Yeah. But anyway, if I am speaking to someone who's not hearing what I have to say and who's really narcissistic or think their own way or it's only about what they think about, and I will tell you that most people look at their managers like they are very selfish and narcissistic, but really they have their own goals. And, and the they're doing that whatever it takes. They're to doing whatever it takes to kind of make those things happen. So I'm not, this is not about labeling someone right or wrong. Mm -hmm. This is about piercing the dark. Mm -hmm. and being able to be heard influencing people when you need to influence and that means you have to speak in the language mm -hmm. that is going to sway them and the so to say is, I agree with you on some things right and I want to do whatever is necessary then you have to do that and you were saying but the thing is but the thing is well, what you're saying, I understand, you know, piercing the darkness, speaking their language. But first, before you even do that with what you want to pierce the, the darkness with, you have to 
know what they want, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's the first thing because I think a lot of times exactly what you're saying, in order they to have speak their own language. agenda. Yeah. So you can't come with yours yes. and assume that someone is going to listen to you if you're not understanding what do they want and am I even lining up with what they want? Yeah. Right. That, it, oh, it makes all the because that's what in the makes. World. I think that's what the most frustrating thing is when you're trying to get someone on your side or to hear you. Yes. You're assuming. That they're going to understand or agree or go with what you're saying, even though they have their own agenda, their own thoughts, their own process. And they're looking at you crazy because they're like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right. You got it. And yeah. so that would be number one is to speak their language. Speak their language. But that's what order speaking to speak their language, their language means. You're going to need to know what their language what do they is, want? what is required in order right. to be heard. It does not mean that you have to agree. It means that you have to have a understanding or a starting point. Right. To say to you that I understand where you're coming from. I understand what you need. I understand what you're talking about. I understand what you're trying to achieve. And I'm on your side. She right next to me. Makes a person listen a little bit easier, what right? What you talking about? I can't be adversarial about everything. Not when I'm trying to get you on, on my, my side. side. Not when I'm trying to pierce the darkness. Okay. And that's <laughs> one thing, especially where I work, being a supervisor, you, you get a lot of people who are frustrated with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, I feel like that's almost the job of a server. It's not just to serve, but to complain. Yeah. If you work in the service industry, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of times, whenever people come to me with their problems, I'm, ne I'm not just saying things that you want to hear. I'm usually telling people, okay, let's first breathe. <laughs> let's bring it down maybe 10 notches. And let's work on actually calmly communicating what the issue is, what you want. And understand what are you really asking of the manager that you're frustrated with? Because what's their job? You know, a lot of times people, you just want what you want. And sometimes that's not, that's not the focus. You right, know what I mean? Right, it's not right. the focus. Sometimes you need to refocus yourself. Right. Right. Absolutely. So that's, that's an important kind of point yeah. when you're talking about that. But the next thing, number two, I would say, yeah. would be to absolutely absolutely be willing to relinquish your yeah. place of correctness my place of right right um that's not always easy and we get no. most frustrated did you know that frustrations usually come when you are trying to change something that you don't have control over okay boom boom bam, what bam. you say francis our leader is not listening to our people Ooh, i know i know that's a whole different conversation. That's a whole conversation in and of itself. But, but you that's know what? Point. Something my mama said, your sister said, when you see crazy coming, don't try to change it. Because crazy ain't going to make sense. It ain't make sense when it showed up. Yep. And it ain't going to make sense when you keep trying. Okay. So you need to just stop Crazy that. Okay. Make sense. So I need to show you guys this knife. Can they see that? I don't if, know. I, if they go, there it is. So see the little ridges in that knife? I am using this to cut a soft cheese. That's something Monster for you guys. Cheese. This one is Munster, and it's really good for melting. Really, really good. I usually put my cheese in the freezer mm -hmm. so that it easily cuts, especially if I'm grating it. But in this case, I'm not, I don't want to grate it. I right. actually want to cut slices. So I'm using a scissor. Um, a scissor. Uh, um, a knife that has aerations in it because what that's going to do is allow you to cut through the cheese and have the cheese just cut through. And, not, and that's what she does cut stick. that cheese. So see easy. how easy it, it cuts and it doesn't stick or anything. If you are using a knife that is really straight and then it starts going through, they can't see it. Huh? Oh, this is a regular knife this time. No um, ridges immediately. See how hard yeah. it is? Yeah, and so what you it's can't see, you guys. You can't see me. I'm still She's trying to hard, push through. And, and it's kind of hard to make it come so through. So if you can see the difference, you see how it's like a clean cut here? Yep. Mm -hmm. And this one, it's, it's not. It's not. With the other one. It's so just not easy. I'm using, see, I tried this one. And see how hard it is for me to even do it? Yeah. But this one has a little bit. This one has a lot. Yeah. So knowing kind of what knives you have and why you have. Did you? Can you see that? With yes. One hand, it's easy, it's so guys. It's easy. Crazy, crazy. But that's, that's something. I like to kind of see if I can 
pass on a little bit of edumacation. Edumacation. <laughs> edumacation. Anytime I'm doing anything. You wonder why you have so many different implements in your kitchen and why they are necessary. But if you understand what each thing is for, then you know when to use it and why you have it. Right. Right. But okay. this this is really it, it just it just makes cutting the cheese so so easy. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't stick to your knife or oh. anything. What? Come on. Oh, finish? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get enough pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, about four for each one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we'll probably make about because she will go on and on about this knife. The same thing? Over and over, over and over, over again. again. It fuss, oh my god, it makes ice so crazy. Okay, so I did that. I'm going to check on my soup. Oh gosh, it smells so good. It's really? Oh, it smells. Doesn't smell really good. Yeah, it does smell really good. It smells really good. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Y'all should be so jelly right now. Mm, mm, mm. But anyway, we're, what are you guys food? eating for dinner? I want to know. What are we eating for dinner? I have some other dinner food in there. I have pork butter in there, cooking slow. It's been we have some pork butt slow cooking. Gosh, pork butt know. is really pork shoulder, just it's in case shoulder. anyone's wondering. Oh, wow, yes. I wonder why they cook I learned pork that butter. very late. You didn't learn that in Memphis? No. So my dad has been smoking pork butt ever since mm -hmm. I was a child. And when I was a child, because it's called pork butt, I thought it was really a pork's butt, and it tastes really, really good. And then I learned, as I was an adult, it's really a shoulder. Mm, smell my rub. Mm, yeah, no, so I made my own rub. rub. Woo! Yeah, it smells really good. You came in early this morning when I was putting it in yeah. the oven, and you were like, that smells good already. She was only smelling the rub. I was like so impressed. It made me feel good. So what do I have in there? I have some smoked salt in here. Uh -huh. I have some smoked paprika. Uh -huh. I have some onion powder. I have some garlic powder. I have some cayenne pepper. Mm -hmm. And I have sea salt. And ground, fresh ground, bam, ground um, pepper. Fresh ground black pepper. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it smells really good, y'all. It smells really good. But what are we eating for dinner? I meant it. Let me know. What are y'all eating? Tell me what you, even if you're on the replay, because we go back and look at those replays, you guys. We like to know what you guys are doing, what you are up to. What is, so I, so we have our thing yeah. that we do every time it snows. When it snows, immediately this one comes out of her room wondering when are we going to have our grilled cheese and tomato soup. Yeah. Like, it's a thing. <laughs> um, so what do you guys have? When it's when it's cold outside, do you have something that you go for? Like, it's your go-to. I must do this. Oh, I need to wash this. I almost put the thing back. I would have been so upset. I would have fussed that ISIS. Who put this in this um, drawer and didn't wash it? Mom. And it would have been She me. always blames me for things I, I didn't do. do. You have to have that person that you get the blame. Mine is ISIS. <laughs> okay. So what's lesson two? Lesson number two. Did I say it? You have oh, to be no. willing to, to say, give it up. Yeah, I meant to say three. Okay. So wait, so did we speak enough on being willing to give it up? Because I don't, I don't, know. don't think so. I think that we think that because we believe we're right, that people have to relinquish their positioning and go with what we right. believe. But the truth is, when somebody else is in charge, they actually get to decide. So they get to own their bad decision or their good decisions. So when you have something to say and you're trying to um, sway them and make them go in the right way, we want them to do what we believe to be right. And the point is not whether you are right or whether you are right. It's what you believe, right? right? In that moment. So it's what you believe. If you believe it, then to you, you're right. And you know, when I was a host, this was when I think I mastered the letting it go okay <laughs> because when i was a host i would get so stressed out because i would have everything planned to a t mm. every reservation had a table and every walk-in <laughs> had to wait and it was just i was ready and then a manager would come in and be like well 
Isis, I, those tables have been open for a while now. Oh, we have, you know, our reservation is coming in 30 minutes. So the table's ready and they'll be seated. So we have a wait. Well, I don't want it to be empty anymore. Go ahead and seat them. Seat the wait list. And I'm like, so where are the reservations going to go? You know, just <laughs> totally, you're just messing up my group over here. And I would get so frustrated because mm -hmm. I know that as soon as I seat these people, the walk in, the reservation's gonna come in early, say, I'm here, let me be sat when you're ready, and I'm gonna have to scramble for tables. And I would get so frustrated, I would go to the manager, why can't we do this, and why can't we do that? And they would look at me like I had nine heads. And you know what I did? I said, okay. And the next step, what do I go, where do I go from here? How do I fix the problem that I know is coming? Rather than focusing on, oh, they're not listening to me. They're not doing what I want them to do. Go ahead and, go ahead and solve the problem because they're going to come to me when the problem needs to be solved. That's right. Right? And that's the way you have to think. Right. Just keep and understand, especially in your positioning, yeah. that you're getting paid no matter what, whether right. they listen or not. So how about making it... Letting go some of the frustration, because remember, frustration comes when we try to change things that we don't have control over, mm -hmm. and let's control the things that we do have control over. Right. It'll make your life so much easier. So when I was talking to my daughter... I got something too. Go ahead. Ooh, I, 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 told, I just said, let it go. Uh -huh. You got to let it go. Did you open that one so it can start air raid? I can. I'm about to put this stuff. So I have a little bit of salt. Remember, salt your food while you're cooking. You don't have to salt it after. And that's probably about tea, two teaspoons. Now, you may have to put a little bit because the the um, acidity and all of the stuff that's in there, mm -hmm. a little bit more salt, but I'm just gonna start off with a little bit, now I'm gonna taste it. I have a small amount of sugar, just a little bit, because of those onions, the tomatoes, they have a, a natural kind of sweetness to them, but usually not an, enough mm -hmm. to overtake. If you are not into the sugar, go ahead and use you some Swerve. Um, this is for all my keto people out there. You can use Swerve. Do they know Swerve what Swerve is? One is to one. Swerve is a one-to-one. -one. So when sugar, um, white sugar is made, it has a off or a byproduct. Mm -hmm. That they usually they used to just get rid of. Well, Swerve is that byproduct, and it still tastes kind of sweet, but it doesn't spike your blood sugar, and it doesn't interact um, molecularly in your body the same way that sugar does. Where well, sugar is not that good for you, Swerve is a lot better. I could use it right now, even myself though. Really good for you. If um, you're doing that. So I'm going to put a little salt in. Go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to put in a little of this sugar. And we are just about at that 20 minute mark. So I am going to take my immersion blender. I, I'm actually going to take some of this basil out. Right now. Woo. You don't have to. Yeah. Take, out, take, the take out the basil. I'm using an immersion blender. You can put this in your stand-up blender, like a um, what's our thing? Vitamix. Vitamix or just a regular blender if you want to. But what I'm gonna do is smooth out all of the stuff in here. I don't want to get rid of it. I could use a strainer, but I want to do that. I want the goodies. Right? I want the goodies. But yeah. So what was I actually thinking? Um, a moment ago when you were saying what you were saying. Another thing that I learned when it comes to when you have someone who's over you and everyone's coming at you saying what they want and all that other stuff and your okay, manager comes. Can you hear? I, I don't know. y'all. Can y'all hear me? Um, just go ahead and do what you're doing because okay. it has to get done. But I'll just speak louder. Um, but one thing I've learned when I let go of all the frustration and they're not listening to me and I finally surrender into this is what management wants. This is what whoever is over me is asking for. Once that happens and I surrender, say I can't necessarily fix the problem. Definitely don't make it your issue even then. Do you agree, Mom? I will call a manager in a heartbeat, especially when I was a host and I made a plan and I went out my way to make sure that I explained to the manager this is why I'm making the plan that I'm making and you choose to go a different route, 
once it all turns to bad words, I'm not going, it's not, I'm, it's still not going to be something I'm going to stress myself over. I will call the manager and I will ask them. So I made the necessary provisions of this. I went with what you wanted to do. What's our next step? You can't make it your issue. After you've done what you can, let it all the way go. Nothing at work is worth being that stressed over. Frustrated and all that, nothing at work is worth it. Nothing. nothing uh, that's like, life. nothing in life is worth, worth being anything. super stressed. Nothing. Okay, so this is working out really well for us. I'm going to have you put some water in that one for me. Hey, guys. Hey. Oh, no, I just... That one. Who is that? Somebody coming. Huh? You have to see it up there. Oh. Now you should come, and that's my teacher, Miss Coleman. Hi, Miss Coleman. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now that's gonna make. I, I just use my immersion blender, mm -hmm. and everything is really, really cooked down really well. I am going to make a roux now with some um, butter oh, and just a little bit of flour. Then I'm gonna take a ladle of that soup and put it in there mm -hmm. after I get the roux going really well. And then I'm gonna put that back over into the soup. It's just gonna make it thicken up a little bit. Okay, I'll I just let, letting you guys know what that little process was. Okay. Okay. So what's gonna be number four? Or actually, we would just we I went into that, that was it. Start talking about that good old wine that you got over there. Okay. So you guys know we are using our expertise in neuroscience, change management, and leadership. That's the part that I just kind of did. Yeah. And I'm hoping that was enlightening. How to pierce the darkness? Really get them to hear you, and if they're not listening still, how to kind of let, let that go. go so that you can have a peace of mind in the space that you're right. in, and you're not really frustrated. So basically, right? understand what the manager wants mm -hmm. before you come to them with what you want. Ooh. Understand how what you want is connected to them so that when you are piercing the darkness, you are actually speaking their language, telling them what they want and how what you want works with what they want. Yeah. And then if that work. still mm -hmm. does not work, how to let it go mm -hmm. and not be stressed out because it's just foolishness and nobody got time. So, <laughs> Right now, we're having the tomato soup for everyone who just joined in. We're making tomato soup and grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. That is very fatty with the cheese, high acidity with the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a wine that is going to pair well through that, which will pierce the darkness. Ooh. Oh, so we pierce in the darkness. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pairs the darkness. So you have to be very careful when you are trying to pair something with tomatoes. It is what I've just learned with this meal. There are very few wines that could actually pair well with tomatoes because of how, the high acidity of a tomato. Yeah, and um, yeah, that, that takes right. what overtake it. And if you don't, if you're not careful with, with, with what you pick for it, it will make the wine seem very dull. So we're going to pick a high acidic wine that can pair well with tomatoes but also kind of cut through the fat of the cheese right and so i have my little book here to help me go help me out a little bit okay so we have our okay <laughs> chianti no because i was about to say it and i was like oh am i saying it wrong so we have our my our chianti um i think the light's too bright and you can't see it so i will um i'll just text you guys what it is but Chianti, yeah, so it is, and I'll just spell it for you guys too, C-H-I-A-N-T-I, -I, Chianti. It is an Italian wine, and like most, well, there are certain um, regions when it comes to wine. You know that we have different varietals when you think of Cabernet Sauvignon, you think of uh, Bordeaux. Bur nope, not, not Bordeaux. That's, That's not a region. Exact, it is a region, but I'm not talking about region. I'm talking about varietals. So varietal ah. is the type of grape. Some, when you purchase wine, you will find wines that say Chardonnay, uh, Pinot Grigio. Those are specific varietals uh, um, that the bottle is made out of. Now, there, there are different ways to go about it. We're just going to stay on topic because, you know, my brain, I know some stuff, so I'm just going to 
stay stay the course so <laughs> some bottles of wine will be labeled what the varietal is whereas others will actually label the region that the bottle of wine was made and within the region you will figure out which varietal was which used is where I to make all confused right which mom and a lot of people get confused so when you see um chianti you think oh that's a varietal that's a grape no it's not it is a region within tuscany italy Okay, and when you go that, when you go into that, what varietals are made to make most Chianti wines, and that is going to be the. All right, you ready, Mom? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am. Sonjo. Mm -mm. <laughs> Do it again, one more time. Y'all, okay. So I'm trying to say these things right. Bear for with the sisters. For, for her and y'all. For her, yes, for me and y'all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have Sonjo. Vese. Sanjo Vese. Yes. Sanjo Vese. Sanjo Vese. No. Vese. Vese. Sanjo Vese. Yeah, that was it. That's right. Woo! That's what Bear with me, y'all. We are going on a journey together. Okay. okay. Sanjo Vese. So that is actually a grape that is known um, within the... Chante, uh, I cannot say anything right. Chianti. 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 Varietal. That is the main grape that is used. So, um, Ki what's going on? Chianti. You are cracking me up. Because I'm struggling so hard. You didn't struggle none of this. Already. I know. I went through everything. I was like, so this, this is why order. we're using this bottle of wine. And I'm struggling, y'all. So just bear, please. Okay. So. With Chianti, it is a blend, and the main grape in that blend is the San Giovanni, San, San Giovanni, Vese. Okay. So, yes, but it is known for its high acidity, mm -mm. so that is why it's going to pair well with the tomato soup, and it will cut through, boom, that cheese. So, when it comes to acidic foods, you want to find a wine that is as acidic as acidic or if not more acidic so that it the wine doesn't fall flat so that's the whole point of everything we got through it y'all okay that was very we? yes because i'm trying to say these names <laughs> cracking me up over struggling here. but it's okay y'all you we getting get it together we're i'm going to get these things okay Probably tomorrow when I wake up, it's just going to be like uh -huh. Sanjo Basic. Yeah. Boom. There it is. All right. I got it. Um, but here are some of the um, typical notes that you will get from a, um, a Chianti wine. So you'll get cherry, roasted tomatoes, um, sweet balsamic if it's been aged, espresso if it's been aged, and a red... Um, Yes, get this one for anything tomato that you are having. It will pair well high acidic, okay? Mm, this looks so good. Okay, so I made that roux. You guys know how to make roux. It's just, it had a little bit of olive oil or grapeseed oil or avocado oil, whatever kind of oil you got going on. Just a little teeny bit, a little bit of about two pats of butter and then about two tablespoons of flour and just get that going really good. Let it brown up and get real nutty smelling. Then I took a couple ladles of that soup and I put it over in the roux and it starts to thicken up really, really good. Then I take the thick roux and I pour it over in the soup and stir it down real good and it's over there on and popping. It smells good. And what, now, what's happening? I'm about to make, um, that's it. It smells good. Basically, you can start tasting that if you like. No, You're more than welcome okay. to taste it. I'm not ready yet. Um, but I'm going to start, I got the grill going, and I am going to put some butter down, and some bread, and some cheese, and we're going to get this thing rocking and what? Rolling. rolling but you know i think I that's probably you. the hardest part about this whole wine journey is saying the names of the wine mm -hmm. that is where i struggle okay 
Because, you know, understanding the wine, the flavors, the aromas, why, that, why it pairs well with other foods, like, it's starting to become more clear. And I think because of this show is actually why, you know, the show is helping because we're constantly pairing wine with the food. Why does it pair? All of those things. But when it comes to these names, I'm like, what? Is it? <laughs> I love because it. you know it's not just like i said before it's not just the varietal that you have to learn you also have to understand the region and why is this grape grown in this region and you know everything it's the history of the, the history region. you know <laughs> how the, the dirt affects you know how you know it's it's all of it sand dirt the grape vines and how old they are depending on how old they are also affects the grapes the seasons so affects the grapes that's why much. the vintage so vintage being the year on the bottle when a when you go to a restaurant and you're not sure which bottle of wine to get in a some way it comes to your table. They are oh, there. Well. And someone yet? Oh, I didn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Comes to your table. They are there to tell you the history of this bottle of wine. And they're able to tell you when they look at this bottle, just knowing where it's from. They know the conditions that the wine typically grows in. And then they also know the grapes that are in it. And then when they tell you this was made in 2016... There is history in what happened in 2016. Maybe there was a lot of rain that year. Maybe there was a storm that swept most of the grapes away. And then it, that's why this bottle of wine is so expensive yeah. because it's vintage. It's <laughs> limited. Like there's so much history within each bottle of wine. And it's cool. I think it's great. It makes me excited to learn about different cultures' history, mm -hmm. you know, in greater detail. And it's all about wine. And then you get to drink wine while you're learning. It's wonderful. <laughs> that was cute. It's true. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start pouring. Would you like oh. to taste? Because I do have to make sure. Look at the specs and stuff. Mm. And it oh, careful now. It's hot. What a name. Salt. I didn't put hardly any salt at all. Um, taste it. Mm. It's really tomato -y. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was it's just good. thinking. I was like... I'm not sure that it needs anything. You sure? Yeah, I'm gonna put some um, heavy whipping cream in it, but I didn't. Maybe want to... that's what it's missing. Oh yeah, it's definitely missing that. All right. So y'all still haven't told me what y'all having for dinner. So y'all making me feel like you out there starving. I got, I got to taste it one more time, y'all. What are we eating? Moment of silence. Mmm. It tastes okay. good. It does. It's ready for the cream. Woo. Mm. It's making her day. It's making her day. Mm -hmm. Do y'all have any questions for the the expert over here or any wine questions? Talk to us. Let us know we're not a, <laughs> in this blizzard well, all do. alone. So is wine a little bit like champagne in that you can do it with your lunch and dinner or whatever? I would definitely not do it with my breakfast. Like, yeah, you can. With my, uh, you know, you can drink champagne. Is when a, champagne you can drink any time of the day. Right, right. There are certain wines where it's just like, I'm having me a glass of champagne. And oh, drink. and then you do have the uh, what? Dessert wine. Yes. I know that. Honestly, you can drink wine whenever you want to. That's one thing I've learned, um, especially studying different psalms and what they view, how they view wine. You know, people try to put these restrictions on wine and say, oh, you can only, you know, eat fish with white wines and eat, you know, meats with reds and that's not necessarily true. It's really about understanding the varietal and understanding, you know, the acidity. Um, is it spicy? Different aspects of the wine itself that affect the food and vice versa. That's all that matters. You know what I mean? And the reason why most reds go with um, most like heavier meats when it comes to, you know, lamb, steaks and, and all of that, it's typically the flavors that are in the wine and how it affects that meat it just pairs it typically pairs well it pairs better but when you have um like a chardonnay that's been aged in oak 
you can still pair that with other you know heartier meats it, it can it can work so don't put yourself in a box understand the varietal how it's been aged has it not been aged all of the different things that affect wine and then understand the food and what pairs well that's all that it is it is not that much rocket science as people try to make it seem it's not that deep so i have a monster here I have a monster mm -hmm. monster cheese cheese i don't even know what monster cheese tastes like Yes, you do. No, I don't. You had it in my house. No, I don't. <laughs> you said, no, I have it. She tried it. I would rather have a cheddar. Well, you said monster. I know. I remember. Because I was making grilled cheeses, and monster makes some good grilled cheese. It really does. She's it's making a weird grilled cheese, y'all. I don't know. Why does it look so weird? It looks so... What? Nothing. Tell me what you're thinking. I always want to know what you're thinking. I don't know. Who else is on here? What we doing? Oh, my, all my teachers are on this thing, and I, I think appreciate that is it. So funny, teachers from what high school? So oh, middle school, we have Miss Coleman from middle school. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Ms. Schilling from um, middle school. I mean, that's high school. And they are watching their little ISIS. Hey y'all, do y'all feel the same way I do? How they? How do you feel? I just be so proud of you all the time. All of your accomplishments and how smart you are. It really does. Well, I'm proud of you too, girl. It is. It's just. This soup looks beautiful. Does it? Yes, honey. Yes, honey. Woo woo! Holla back. Did you? Yes. <laughs> I'm bad as you now as it comes to. So let's, I want to switch. Can I do that? Can move this me? over here. Yeah. I'm going to move this forward and that back. Thank you. And your what? Ministry. Boom. Boom. Let me get these. Grilled cheeses before they burn, because you know a grilled cheese will burn so fast. We have to taste this wine first, though, Mom. No, we dig um, it. You, you ready. I'm ready to taste the wine. Okay. Let's get this food on. I'm going I'm to um, turn off the stove, because, you know, say that out loud. You have to turn it off. Yes, I do. You said don't. I was going to make another grilled cheese. Oh, uh, no. You ain't ready to make it right this minute. Okay. She's so bossy. Yeah, I'm like, I'm just going to leave the grill on. Sheesh. It's Ooh. a grilled cheese. Yummy. Pass my bowl through the phone. I got you. Ooh. That was they, they said pass Oh, my on. goodness. I miss you, auntie. I know. I miss you, too, auntie. I love have to you. cook food early so that you can come by and get some after church. All okay, right. that's our grilled cheese. So we need to tell a picture. Um, <laughs> this is kind of hard to do. Mom's trying to make the, pic, the thing all pretty. It's just it doesn't work that way. It, it does. We got soup. I can't do that. So this is the soup, you guys. It looks really good. I wish I could show you better, but it's kind of hard to see. But it's really good. I don't know if you guys see that. Mm -hmm. And grilled cheese. You know what grilled cheese looks like, right? Ooh, they can't see this one. They got the blonde one. You have to use that one. No, you didn't. She picked it up in her mm -hmm. hands. And I am going to taste some. Can you taste some? No, I want to taste the wine first. You want to taste the wine? Taste the wine first. Taste the wine. So let's just get, let's open that thing right on up. Get the air in. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is always my concern. Is it aerated enough? Isis. And she's like, mom, I know what I'm doing here. Baby, put it in the blender. <laughs> she said, put it in the blender, Lord. Mm. <laughs> Cause you got definitely lots of very like serious fruit notes. 
Yeah, red fruit. High acidity. Yeah, you can. Well, oh my God, yeah. You can even smell and it. And if you, if you can see the color, you guys, um, looking at the rim, mm -hmm. it's a lighter shade. The reason why it's lighter is because the Son Jovese mm -hmm. wine, um, the, I mean, the, the grape itself, it's kind of like Pinot Noir. The, the, the skins of the grape are very thin, which is causing the wine, although it is a medium bodied wine, it's still kind of translucent. Like you can see it through it a little bit. So body comes from color? Well, the color okay. comes from the the um, skin itself. Right. So there are, when you think of a Cabernet Sauvignon, things like that, Syrah, those um, the full body wines, when you think of a lot of full body wines, the reason why they are full body is because of the grape. The grape, the, it's very small, the skins are very thick, mm -hmm. and that's what happens during the fermentation process. It's all thrown in together, the skins, all of that is thrown in, and that's what, the skin is literally dying the wine. But this one. But with this one, the skin is, a, is slightly thinner, thinner, which is why it's not as, you know, it's full body. Full body. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Exactly what you said. Okay. Okay, I'm going to taste it, can I? Yeah. Whoa, it's high acidity. Definitely high acidity. But that's what's necessary with the tomatoes. Okay, if you need it's something. It's dry. It is, it is a dry wine. High acidity. Mm -hmm. What else you get? Very, very uh, high tannins. You think high, it's not high no, tannins? No, you don't think so? It's not high tannins. Okay, tell me, tell me, tell me why. <clears throat> Tell you why it's so so tannins is so strong. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. And we're gonna. Your mom doesn't like <laughs> dry wines, so that's why she's struggling right now with the tannin. You will typically get a really dry sensation in the middle of your tongue. Mm -hmm. Take a sip. No, because you're not getting that. I'm at not all. getting that mm -hmm. exactly. So it's very low tannin. Mm -hmm. It's not. You're not it's getting up here and back there. That, but you're getting a lot of wet, which is the acidity. The acidity. It's high acidity. Yep. So, so in drinking it, mm -hmm. then I get the burst of saliva, mm -hmm. that, that natural reaction to it, You're right? Um, which tells me it's high acidity, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Which is necessary mm -hmm. to go with the tomatoes. Absolutely. Okay. So now I am going to taste the tomato soup. Now, let me have a spoon. I thought I gave you one. Oh. It's just talking to you. Phone. Mm -hmm. Just be listening and talking. All right. Let's see what we got. All right, y'all. We're going to go in. We're going in. Nobody can see. Hmm? When, when you... I went up. First of all... Tastes good. I know. <laughs> let's, just, <laughs> let's just deal with that. Let's start there. It tastes really the good. The tomato soup is delish. Yeah, that's really good. Mm -hmm. All right. With the wine. Mm. Wow. I'm loving the tomato soup. So I did put a little bit of heavy cream in there, you guys, at the end. In case you didn't know that. It complements it so daggone well. Woo. It's so good. It's so good. What oh. in the world? Okay, this one I don't like. I don't like the wine. It pairs so well, y'all. But it does. Because it the wine... It makes the wine... So at first, I didn't like it at all. It's so balanced. But the two together... It's so balanced. It make this taste better. But it it's makes better. this wine... With the... With the tomato soup, it makes this wine so refreshing when you drink okay, it. Okay, I can go with that. I it's can, it's I can it's a it. It's a really good pair. I... Boop. It's a really oh good pair. God. It's such a good pair, y'all. But the soup, though, for real, y'all. This, this is this is nice. This soup is crazy good. I'm so I'm gonna take mine, old fashioned. I'm dunking it in there. <laughs> mm. This is perfect. Do that. This is perfect. I'm stuck on this. And you all. I'm a cousin. I don't I'm like the, the wine. I'm the food. I'm the foodie, <laughs> and she's the wine person. I know, right? <laughs> it's way good. Okay, y'all. 
the tomato basil soup. Do your own at home. We started off. I'm in heaven. Mm. She don't have to drink this one. I drink it all by myself. I don't need it's her. Good. I don't it's need good. your help. All right, can I have my bon appetit? All right, you guys. Mm -hmm. To staying warm when it's snow outside, to being safe when the roads are icy, and hanging out with family on Sunday dinner. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. I'll catch you on the other side. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.